Hello and welcome to the History Unicorn Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of the paranormal. From the subreddit a slash Bigfoot. And our slash paranormal encounters. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in, and find out exactly what the shadow in the corner of your eye is. This was originally posted in our slash creepy encounters, but I found it in our slash Bigfoot. I was hiking in the Olympic National Forest, a few years ago, by myself and my two dogs. We were four days in, around 20 miles at least as the crow flies from even a known mountain road. I was camping at around 7,000 feet that night, or right where the tree line started thinning out. So when we got to the campsite, a big open meadow on top of a secondary mountain, it was about an hour from sunset. My big dog usually runs around within proximity of the camp, as I put the tent up make dinner, etc. But, I noticed this time was a little different. He kept staring up this steep tree-filled mountainside. Tall straight up, and barking. Not the bark when he sees marmots. Not the excited oh you emphas are lucky, because I'd rip you all apart if my master wasn't here high-pitched barks but unsure, concerned barks. Now, the day before I had found a note left under a rock, at the last landmark, saying that there was a problem bear in the area, that was harassing a party of campers a few days ago. And I myself had seen big cat tracks the day before. So I was rightfully concerned that this may be more than just ground squirrels. I decided to go climb some of the boulders at the foot of the hill, while I took my time looking up the hillside for a moment before I went to go hang my bear bag up there. They were the only trees around to hang the bag. I didn't see hear anything, but my dog kept quietly whining like there was something up there. So while still concerned, I start hiking up the steep hill, to hang the bag. It was so steep I had to use the trees to balance, and lean against so I didn't go tumbling down. Before making another 5-6 to six step push to the next tree, I could lean against. Anyway, I'm slowly making it up the hill ridge. Hopping from tree to tree, to keep my balance. Then I get about 100 feet up the hill. And I hear a whole lot of big movement about 50 feet in front of me. My dog immediately goes from a deep low growl, to a savage, slobber flying everywhere type barking now. My heart starts pounding out of my chest, and I start to panic. A million thoughts go racing through my head in the matter of seconds because if this is a bear, my dog is going to try to save me. In which he will most likely die. And I'm stuck here. If I have to get off that hillside fast, I almost 100% am going to trip and fall off the 12 to 15 foot cliff, onto the boulders below. Like hundreds of 5 to 20 foot boulders. So I'm feeling pretty screwed about now. Then I hear my other little dog start barking, and freaking out down at my campsite, which is just out of sight. I had zipped her in my tent, so she didn't wander off while I was away. So yeah, I'm absolutely panicking at this point. A few seconds after I kinda snap back to it, and I take another few seconds to start to put my survival priorities in order, and call my dog back to me. Loki by the way. He comes and sits against my feet, as my back is against a tree, so I'm kinda pinned stuck there for the moment. But my dog was seemingly trying to separate me from something up there, so I let him lean against me while I try to collect myself. This is when I realized I had completely forgot that I had my headlamp on. I reached up so fast to turn my lamp on I basically punched myself in the face. I'm having some serious adrenaline dumps going on right now, so much so that my knees are starting to shake. I get my lamp on, and peer up the hillside. I figure I'll at least get a reflection off the eyes of whatever is up there. Peering. Peering. Nothing. But I had just heard something, we both did. And whatever it was it didn't get away, or sound like it had made it too far. I knew something was there. So I'm kinda just steadfast at this point. I need to know what is up there, because I have to sleep here tonight. And you know, I'm out in the middle of nowhere alone. Better face it, than wait like a sitting duck all night is my thought process. So yeah, as I'm looking up this hill, and at one point my dog lunges forward, unpinning me. 
He does a fake bluff charge up the hill about 15 feet, and I mean he's snarling and foaming at the mouth at this point. As he does this, I finally see movement. Something moving up and breaking the line of the horizon sunset. My dog's bluff made whatever it was blow its cover. So I'm zeroed in. I call my dog back and silently watch, and what I make out made my heart completely drop. There was a man crouched about 75 feet directly in front of me. Wearing. Not camo clothes. But some raggedy shit with a hood, that blended into the environment perfectly. Actually, almost like a makeshift Julie suit, but with his face exposed. I couldn't see his eyes, and his face was covered in dirt or something, but I knew we were staring right at each other at that moment. So, I stare. For what seems like minutes. No words. I felt like I was trying to subconsciously convey that I was going to stand my ground. I wanted him to know I saw him, but I guess I was just too shaken to speak. As I'm staring, my little dog back at the campsite, started to bark her head off again, like she was scared. And I also had to get off that hill before total dark, or I could be seriously hurt, risk dying trying to get back down. So carefully I started heading down the hill with my dog, who doesn't want to leave but listens. Periodically I would stop with my back against a tree holding me up, and look in that direction again, just to make it even more clear I saw him. And eventually I make it down to the boulders at the bottom. By the time I finally jumped down and hit the boulders, my little dog had stopped barking. I could only see the top of my tent from the bottom of the boulders. I thought she was barking just to bark, Daxon do that, or just barking back at my dog. But when I get there, my little dog had somehow got out of the tent, and was walking around the camp growling, with her tail sticking straight out. Still trying to hold it together, I thought okay. Maybe she just got her nose between the zippers and worked her way out. But I was positive, I had it so the zipper tap, openings was at the very top of the tent door. Out of reach. So, in a mixture of being terrified, pissed off, and the feeling of needing to do something. I reached into my day bag and pulled out my 40. I fire a single shot into the air as the sun was setting, climb into my tent without eating, and lay with my gun next to me until first light. As soon as the sun came up, I was packing up my shit and leaving, heading back down the mountain. It was dark by the time I made it to the last camp, about 4 miles from my vehicle. But thankfully there were other people there. We sat around a fire they made, and I felt pretty relieved and safe. They started to tell me they are planning to head that way, where I was the night before, in the morning. So I tell them my story in detail. Needless to say, we were both walking back to our cars in the morning. Screw all that. The thing that still creeps me out till this day though, is when I got home, and started reading reviews of the same hike I was on other people had. Had similar experiences like mine, as well. Even a man found dead from a fall around the same boulder range two years ago. And a woman found murdered last year. In the comments below, tell me what you think OP saw. Was it a creepy mountain man, or something else? I was in my bedroom and about to go to sleep. I like to be warm and toasty so my place was set at 75 degrees. I was drifting into sleep, when I felt my entire bedroom go ice cold. I then felt my covers of the bed start moving. It felt as if someone had come in, and was getting into my bed next to me. I then felt like someone was holding me. I immediately froze, and didn't know what to do. After about 10 seconds or so I got a strong feeling, if I did nothing I'd be in danger of something. And so I got up and looked around. The covers looked pulled up on my right, I sleep on the left side, and I looked around, and saw no one. I exhaled all creeped out, and turned to my side to sleep. All of a sudden it happened again, but this time it felt like whoever was in my bed was lonely, and not dangerous and wanted company. I again jerked up, and the covers looked odd again. I was completely freaked out, and shut my eyes, and prayed to just go to sleep. I don't know what entered my room, or why it turned ice cold, and the covers were weird. I just know that I felt a presence and it felt like a man's presence as well. Was I dreaming? I felt awake though when I sensed the shift in the temperature, and I guess energy. Nothing has happened like that again so far, but I've had paranormal experiences in the past. The comments on this post are interesting. Initial shop 8863 tells OP research incubus, succubus. And I don't mean the band. 
OP responded to initial shock 8863. That is crazy you mentioned that because I omitted the part, in my post, where I felt it kissing my neck, and I was extremely scared. And my thought was, I'm going to get graped. Okay, now I'm afraid to go to sleep right now. Alp Dream commented. One of the best ways to keep spiritual entities out of your space, is to say with intent, and a strong will that they should go away. And that they are not welcomed in your space. Spirits like these are usually the kinds that are spiritually weak, and search for other spiritually weak individuals to gain energy from them. Don't be scared of them, tell them to leave. If they are persistent, and don't want to go easily. Then cleanse your space, smoke from incense is the easiest, you can also ring a bell. This experience is unsettling. In the comments below, tell me what you think was in OP's room. Was it a succubus or incubus? When I was dating my ex-girlfriend, I used to stay at her house every chance I got. Nothing specifically scary happened there. We would see things though, rarely, dark mass clouds sometimes out of the corner of our eyes, or early morning in the bedroom. It would come and go, sometimes disappear for months then show back up. She told me not to worry about it, and that she used to be afraid but they never bothered her, or interacted. Except one night, I came in her room from my shower, and she was already asleep. There was a man with a dog-like face standing next to her. His body was very faint and transparent, but his face had facial features of a dog. I froze and asked, who are you? And it replied, a friend. I asked what it wanted, and he just vanished, like literally faded away. Has anyone else had an experience like this or even a little similar? This one is a head scratcher. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about OP's experience? For context, I'm currently living in a national park, so most of our housing is on native land. Side note, I am using fake names. I drove with two of my friends to drop some food off at one of our friends, Carl's house. My friend Bailey, went inside the house while Laura and I stayed in the car. We were in a parking lot when my friend, Laura, asked me if that was a person. I turned to look and behind a car, there was something or someone peeking over the car, and hiding and I wasn't sure if it was a person or not. I decided to turn on the headlights, and I managed to catch a peek and whatever it was did not have a face. It was almost completely white as well. When it saw it hid really quickly. And we started to freak out, and my friend managed to get in really quick. As we sped by we saw a black shape, just crouching behind the car. I'm really shook up, does anyone know what it might be? Josette 22 commented. At first you said it was all white, then you said you saw a black shape. Was it two different entities? OP responded to Josette 22. Maybe, it was humanoid and I shined the light, and it was white. Maybe it appeared black because it was squatting in the dark. I know it wasn't human though. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a creepy human or something else? Okay, so backstory. My grandpa was, still is, very sick. He lives three hours away from me and my family. One day we were at like, target in the cold aisle and we see someone with his exact body type. We all run the other way because we are freaking out. Why he is at the target because he is not mentally stable, we then bring ourselves together, and we continue. We turn the corner and there the guy is an exact replica of my grandpa. And he says hi, and we just say hello. And walk away. I thought it was just me seeing things, but when we got to our car my mom said, oh my god he looked just like my dad. We were very mind blown, he was also wearing this bright yellow safety vest. I'm very like shocked still to this day. Please help me explain this. I do think it's paranormal, also he had same long grey and brown beard, same body type, same voice, same face. But it wasn't my grandpa. There's no way he could even have made it to us. He was one. At a hospital. Two. Like pretty far away. And three. Didn't have a car. Let me know in the comments below, was it a doppelganger or just a case of mistaken identity? The stories so far have been head scratches and a little chilling. 
If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our paranormal series or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. I'm 22. This happened when I was 14. I remember it like it was yesterday. I lived with my mum and brother. I remember lying in bed trying to fall asleep, I was on the edge of complete sleep until I heard an angelic, genderless voice call my name. Hey Leah, how are you? The second I heard this I shivered in fear, pulling the duvet covers over my head, and I assumed I blacked out, because I woke up the next day forgetting it had happened. The next day was a normal day, decided to change my bed covers when my brother walked in and asked me if I had heard anything last night. I instinctively said no, but as soon as I said that again, shivers as I remembered the night before. I asked why. He told me he kept hearing his own name being called a few times. He thought it was our mum, he took his headphones off, was awake playing Xbox, and heard it the last time. He told me he went into mum and she was asleep. The same with me. I told him what had happened to me, and we both freaked out. Begging our mum to tell us the truth, she didn't do it. Of course my mum didn't. The comments reflect just what a head scratcher this experience was. Xavier Investigations commented. I'm an avid paranormal investigator and in my free time I go on communities like this, and try to help people with their paranormal related challenges. But honestly, I don't know what to say on this one. To me it sounds like a taunting spirit that may have originated from some sort of ritual, though it's unlikely you wouldn't mention you did one of those. Is this the only time it's happened? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did OP hear angels or another type of entity? When I was 10, about 16 years ago, I saw a strange creature in my house. When I was coming home from my friend's house, it was about 8 pm and it was really dark. My parents weren't home. We had no pets at the time. The house was pitch black. I opened the front door and through the window of our hallway door, I saw a long skinny creature standing in our living room. It had no hair or clothes, and looked almost like a shadow. It was standing on two legs and had two arms. I couldn't recognize any excess features it might have had. There was a highway next to our house, so car lights made it look like a silhouette. It appeared to be so tall that it needed to crouch a bit to fit in our house. It didn't have eyes, but I felt it stared right into mine. I turned around and started running, I heard something crack behind me, and kept running and didn't look back. After about 30 minutes of hiding in a bush about 100 meters of our front door, I went to take a look. No sign of it anywhere. Only a cracked porcelain lamp on the floor. Through the years I have thought many times it was my imagination, until recently. I went to see my parents a while ago, and after a quick look I found the shards of that porcelain lamp in a plastic bag at the back of a wardrobe. I asked my parents what they knew about this lamp, and they said it broke a long time ago, they can't remember why. To this day, I have no idea what I saw or what it wanted. In the comments below, tell me what you think OP encountered. Was it a creature or an intruder? Okay, so I'm not really sure what this could be, but I live in northern Michigan, which is pretty wooded and has lots of small forests. Where I live is one of them and my dog, whenever we go for a walk at night, if I don't keep him in my direct line of sight, he will disappear and no matter how much calling or anything, I can't find him. But after me or my partner gets distressed enough he reappears in odd places we've searched within the last minute or two. I don't know what paranormal creature likes to take pets, but any insight would be helpful. Here are some of the comments, attempting to help OP to identify what is happening to their dog. Serenity450 commented. Creepy. Does he seem anxiety ridden or off in any way, when he comes back? OP responded to Serenity450. No not anxiety ridden, but almost in a trance. We'll call his name after he appears, but he doesn't show any sign of recognition to me or my partner, and goes straight for the door. 
It's only after he gets inside does he seem to return to his normal self. Serenity450 responded to OP. Oh my god, I would lose it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think happened to OP's dog? My sister, 31, recently bought an elf rag doll from our local upcycle center for her dog. Since then she has had a few odd things happen. She has always been open to spirits, but nothing paranormal has happened in her new house, until she got this doll. She woke up thinking her cat or dog was playing with her feet, only to see a large dark figure at the end of her bed. She came home to the elf, sat upright on the stairs facing the front door, when no one was home and the dog was with my parents. It's too big for the cat to carry. Her plants have been moved while she was in the house, but upstairs with the animals and her partner was at work. I just don't feel good about this, and I'm trying to convince her to get rid of it. The most recent thing is, she is now experiencing chest pain burning. She has been to A&E as well as the doctors, who cannot find anything wrong with her. She hasn't noticed anything new with the elf. Please and some suggestions. Sorry if this is the wrong place to post. The comments are interesting, and all are attempting to help OP with this potentially dangerous situation. Zesaran commented, burn it in a safe location, don't abandon in the woods. Whatever it has come into contact with needs to be cleansed and blessed, and rid of lingering energy. Leechwa responded to Zesiran. Won't burning it have the opposite effect? By destroy its home attachment it will have to reconnect to something else. Or someone else. Ananada Priestess Love responded to Leechwa. No. Fire is a purifier. If you are very concerned, sprinkle blessed salt and bay leaves over it while praying for protection, and a clean break for the spirit in the doll from you and your family. My go-to is the Archangel Michael for this. I recommend getting a few pink Himalayan sea salt lamps off Amazon. For whatever reason, negative entities seem to have trouble manifesting around them. I would get a few, pray for protection when you turn them on, then leave them on. I recommend cleansing your home with a strong blend of the commercial cleansers Chinese wash, run devil run wash, and strong rosemary or sage tea. A blend of holy water, 13 lemons, and 7 bay leaves will work too. For any of these washes, pour water you have prayed over then brought to a boil over your wash mix. Let it soak at least 13 minutes, I like at least 27 minutes, usually an hour, watch your eyes because it's strong stuff. Scrub your home while praying for cleansing and protection. It is traditional to wash your home from top to bottom, back to front. For my house cleanings I get a spray bottle, a new broom of the older style, and a swiffer. I use the broom on the ceilings and walls first, then spray and swiffer the ceilings and walls with the cleaning solution. Then use the broom and swiffer on the floor. If it's carpet, mist lightly, then vacuum or sweep. Discard your vacuum bag afterwards, if you use one. After I am done in each room, I light a white tea light candle dressed in house blessing oil on a small plate, lit while saying Psalm 91 or 23, then left to burn out. In your case, I recommend a combo of van van oil, house blessing oil, and run devil run or fiery wall of protection oil on your candles. Online I like Papa G, Lucky Mojo Curio Company, and Legendary Kunja in Arizona for supplies. To prevent reoccurrence, the first thing to try is sprinkle a bit of blessed salt in the corner of each room while you pray. To strengthen the effect, place a bay leaf on the salt while praying for protection. When I do a cleanse, I play happy music. I dance, and bring friends over to dance with me, and help me clean. Happy vibes are like an antibiotic for negative energy. And many hands make light work. Also, if you like you can reach out to the Temple of Miriam the Prophetess online. They have a physical temple, and if Dr. Vice gives the okay, they can store possessed objects in their holding pit. It is a repository for holy and or haunted objects, and is prayed over as per Jewish tradition. That should definitely hold any energy attached to the doll. OP responded to Ananada Priestess Love. It is currently sat in her garage in a ring of salt, and her chest pain has completely stopped. Dude how do you feel commented. Cleanse the place. Maybe even talk to a priest. But is there anything else like unexplained smells, knocking, or bruises on her? If not, do the animals seem spooked by it? If not, then possibly not a negative entity, but with the chest pain I'd say bless the house. 
OP responded to dude how do you feel? Nothing else yet, she said she saw someone in her bedroom window when she got home from A&E, the other night and her partner was downstairs at the time. Dude how do you feel responded to OP. Then I'd say do a cleanse. Just get some incense, get every corner of the house and for an extra kick say. If you are not of light and love, I thank you for your presence, but it is time for you to go. OP responded to dude how do you feel. The doll is now in her garage sat in a ring of salt, her chest pain has completely gone. Dude how do you feel responded to OP. Definitely a negative entity. Good thinking with the salt. De Stefano responded. Yes call a priest for sure. It's a bother, but you are a stage where this isn't a problem yet. Don't let resistance take a hold of you, and get rid of ASAP. OP responded to De Stefana. I'm trying to convince her to get rid of ASAP. But I don't think she thinks is all bad. I managed to get her to sit it in a ring of salt, and she is no longer experiencing pain. De Stefana responded to OP. That is one of the most challenging things. People refuse to get rid of that which is haunting them. That is precisely what the inhuman spirit wants them to do. They try to appear inoffensive to them during the first stage. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of OP's doll problem? I was at the park with the kids, 11 and 8, and my dog, 45 pound Dutch Shepherd. The park equipment has a 4 foot fence around the whole thing. The sidewalk leads from a dock to the parking lot, with the fence in park on the left, if walking towards the parking lot. The entrance to the park is on the opposite side from the parking lot, closest to the dock. Me and the kids were walking towards the truck to leave and saw an older man and woman, 50s, get out of their car, which was parked directly beside my truck. Both dressed very nice. Sunday dress. The woman walked to the bathrooms on my right, and the man, in a button-down, tie, dress pants, and shoes, walked towards the fenced-in kids park. I glanced behind me to make sure the kids were on my heels and I shit you not, within the two seconds that I glanced behind me and looked back for the man, thinking he was going to walk past me, he was already on the swing and swinging. The kids immediately looked at me and my daughter said, that man is so strange. He was laughing and swinging, and looked my direction, and in a friendly pass by I just said. The swings don't swing as high as they used to. And he replied something along the lines of, and they weren't this squeaky either. The swings were loud and rusty. I got to the truck like 45 seconds later, very small park, and turned my head to check for him again. And he was gone, and the swing was just violently swinging as if he jumped off of it and vanished. I hurried the kids into the truck and walked the dog around to my side, which was directly beside their vehicle. They weren't in there. They weren't in the park. Nowhere to be seen. When I drove off, I asked the kids if they thought that whole interaction was weird, and they immediately said yes. Not sure who these people were, or how the hell they moved so fast, and apparently just vanished. But it felt like an odd glitch in the matrix, and it's been on my mind for a few days. What do you think of it? In the comments down below, let me know what you think. Was this a glitch in the matrix, an intelligent haunting, or something else? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Paranormal series, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button, and leave a comment down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.